If it looks like a crazy mess back here, that's cause it is. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body cameras by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller. I've been selling on a bunch of different platforms. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about two weeks worth of sales, specifically the last two weeks of September. We're also gonna just be talking about the reality of reselling as a side hustle when the parts of your life that are not your side hustle are extremely busy. Um, as many of you know, I am a full-time high school choir teacher and there are a lot of busy seasons that come with that. I also have two young kids who are involved in a lot of different things. You know, they have have different sports that they do, they have practices, they have just a ton of stuff. And my husband is really busy too. So we're always juggling like a million schedules. And I feel like as a result, I often go to bed at night just exhausted, but also feeling like, oh, there's just all this stuff that I wanted to do that I didn't get to. And I think that's the reality of reselling part-time. You have to just kind of fit it in where you can um, and just kind of do the best that you can with the time that you have. So I think that the weeks that we're going to talk about in today's What Sold video is a true testament to that. You know, I just had a lot going on at work, um, but I will talk to you about some of the tools that I use to help make reselling a little bit easier to save some time. Um, another true testament as to just how busy I am is look at my nails. Like, look how ridiculous. <laughs> like, I'm fully, like, I'm very shocked that they're even still intact. They're like the um, dip dye. Is that what it's called? But I'm, like, shocked that they haven't just, like, come off or started to chip or anything. But you can see, like, how overdue it is for me to get my nails done. So lots of things that are falling through the cracks. Plus, I'm coming off of being sick for a week with COVID. So it's just been a lot of stuff. But you didn't come on here to listen to me whine. So let's talk about what's sold. All right. So the first day of sales that we'll talk about is September 19th, which is Monday. We're doing two weeks of sales in this video and you might see lots of videos in the coming weeks that feature two weeks because I need to get caught up. But the first thing that sold on Poshmark was this pair of Skechers gray and pink, all cooled. I think that's what it's called All Cooled Memory Foam Sneakers in a women's size 11. So you've heard me talk a lot about the luck that I have selling women's shoes in a size 10. Um, 11 is taking it yet another step in the direction of shoes for, you know, women with bigger feet. And it's something that I have heard is hard for women to find. I think I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum. I wear like a kid's two and I can wear like a women's four, four and a half, depending on the shoe, sometimes a five. But it's very very hard for me to find shoes as well. And sometimes I have no option but to pay up for shoes because there are so few in my size. In the same way, I think you see that when it comes to shoes in like a size 11 or 10 for women or obviously bigger. But the issue also becomes now you start to narrow your pool of people who are interested in buying your item because there just aren't as many people out there with a size 11 foot. So these I did have listed for a few months, but they did sell for $31. That was with discounted shipping. And I picked those up at a local thrift store. I paid $4.99 for them. Um, I used to pass on Skechers all the time. I just didn't think that they were a shoe that people would pay up for. Turns out a lot of people love Skechers and they will pay a decent amount for them, even used. So I have started to pick them up more, I feel like lately than I did before. I still find that they sit for a decent amount of time. They don't sell instantaneously. They don't sell very quickly, but they will eventually sell. And so with the discounted shipping and with the cost of goods and Poshmark's 20% fees, my net profit on those shoes was $18.09. So even with this first sale of the week, I can talk to you about one of the tools that I use on a daily basis to help me save some time when it comes to my reselling business, and that is Posture VA. Posture VA is a Chrome extension that allows you to be a little bit more hands-off with your Poshmark closet. This is just a tool for Poshmark, so if you don't sell on Poshmark, this is not going to be helpful for you. But it does things like share your closet, send out offers to likers for you, relist items. It does a lot of really great things that Poshmark sellers should do, but it does them for you so you don't have to sit there and do them. If you know of tools like this, by the way, for platforms like Depop or Mercari or Kitizen, please let me know because anything that I can do to automate my reselling business as much as possible, I'm 
all about that life. So if you guys know of anything, let me know down in the comments below. The next thing that sold for me was this pair of Miss Me Signature Boot Cut Embroidered Floral Back Flap Jeans in a women's size 27. These I picked up at a Goodwill in the Chicago suburbs. I want to say we were there for my daughter's gymnastics competition. I think that's why we were there, like a gymnastics meet. Um, and so I paid up for these quite a bit. I paid $14.99. I do think the price of Miss Me's, you know, only continue to go down as they become more saturated in the reselling markets. But I still was able to move these for $42. So once you factor in my cost of goods and Poshmark's fees, my net profit on those jeans was $18.61. I probably, from this point on, will not pay more than like, I want to say $8 or $9 for Miss Me jeans, just because, yeah, I mean, I think even getting $42 for them, that's a pretty good amount for Miss Me, so... I do think that my days of paying up for Miss Me are definitely over. The next thing to sell, okay, I've had this for like three years, I'm pretty sure. This has been in my closet forever. So the brand is Hana Fu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it was this purple velvet woven zipper crossbody bag, and it had like all this hardware on it, like just all these zippers all over the place. It was a cool bag, very like art to wear, very just kind of out there, avant-garde, if you will. Um, I got this from a student's mom of mine. Her mom, so my student's grandmother, her closet was just full of this kind of stuff, like very art to wear, a lot of like Bob Mackie, a lot of, I can't even remember, it was so long ago, but very like log and look, that kind of stuff. And so my student's mom brought me a bunch of stuff as they were cleaning out her mom's stuff one day. And this was one of the items that she gave me to resell. I had never heard of the brand before. There were very few comps, and I listed it really high to begin with. I want to say maybe at like $100, maybe $75. I could tell it was really unique, but man, that sucker has been listed for so long. And I've tried so many things with this. Like, I think I tried sending it into the real real. I think I tried sending it into Thread Up. I think I have relisted it like a bajillion times. It finally sold on Poshmark for $54 with discounted shipping. So that was another Posh or VA sale. So I made a profit of $41.48. However, I believe that I got the shipping labels mixed up for this and the Miss Me jeans that I just talked about. So I don't remember who reached out first, but someone reached out and they're like, um, I ordered a pair of jeans, but instead I got this purple bag. And then I had to reach out to the other buyer and let them know like, hey, you're about to get the wrong package in the mail. I'm so sorry. Like, this is what we're going to do moving forward. And whenever that happens on Poshmark, Poshmark will reach out to both parties. They will send them labels so that they can just send the items to one another. And it's really nice that Poshmark does that. I don't know if any other reselling platform does that. Um, and Poshmark always kind of sends you a little reminder saying, like, if this happens again, like, you're going to be responsible for the cost, which I totally understand because they're doing it on their dime, which is that really a big inconvenience? for them when they're making a ton of profit off of this shipping deal that they have with USPS. I don't think so. I think they can eat the cost of my once in a while mistake when it comes to switching shipping labels, but that's another story for another time. Anyway, I'm very lucky in that both buyers agreed to send the items to one another. They did it in a timely manner. They each got their items, and I think they even both gave me five stars, which was really generous of them. They totally didn't have to because, you know, my mistake resulted in them getting their items probably a week later than what they expected. So it was very kind of them to go ahead and send the items off to one another. Um, but that was a mistake that I made. I still thankfully made my profit on this bag. It only took three years. So if you come across this brand, that's not my way of saying that you shouldn't pick it up, but it is my way of saying, Lord have mercy, you might be sitting on that thing for a cool white some time. And then on eBay, I sold this pair of Talbot's tan high-rise nautical buttons trousers in a size 8. And what I mean by nautical buttons is they had kind of that sailor look like at the hips, you know, with the buttons. These sold for $20 on eBay. I only had $1 into them because I got them at this super clearance um, sale, like a sidewalk sale at a local consignment store that I like to frequent. So I made a profit of $18.11 on those. Talbot's 
is one of my favorite brands to pick up and resell. It's a great bread and butter brand. I don't particularly recommend picking up their pants just because I do feel like I have to sit on those a little bit longer, but they will eventually sell. I think people who work in an office space where they have to wear dress pants, they do love and trust Talbots as a good brand for their dress pants. It's just one of those things though where I do feel like there's a lot listed online, so you'll probably sit on them for quite some time. The second item to sell on eBay was another Talbots piece, only proving my point. The Talbots is a great brand and it's a brand that I think especially sells well on eBay, but it was this paisley sleeveless blouse in a size medium petite. This sold for $16. I had $2 into it because it came to me in a thread up bulk mixed rescue box. And so once you factor in my cost of goods and eBay's fees, that profit that I was able to pocket was $11.43. This is an example of a type of Talbot's piece that I wouldn't pick up. I feel like these really lightweight sleeveless blouses, even like their regular button up shirts, you'll probably move them for like $15 to $18. And at that point, is it worth it? I don't know. If it's 100% silk or linen, or something like that. That's another story, but just like these polyester or cotton pieces, I don't think are necessarily worth picking up. But because this came to me in a thread up box, I was like, sure, I'll go ahead and list it. The next sale was over on Mercari and surprise, surprise, it was another Talbots piece. It was part of their RSVP by Talbots line, which is kind of like their dressier line. It's for more formal occasions and this dress was definitely no exception. It was this navy crepe and lace long sleeve dress in a women's size 14. So this I picked up at a local Goodwill for $6.99. I was happy to do so because I knew that this was a special piece that would do pretty well. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I'm looking for when it comes to Talbots. I'm looking for just really special pieces, um, things that would cost a ton retail in the store. This just probably costs over $200 at Talbots. Um, but you know, if I can pick it up for $6.99 and flip it, that is definitely worth my investment. And it's something that people are going to be anxious to purchase online because most likely they're not going to wear this very often and they're going to wear it to like a wedding or two perhaps and they don't want to spend over $200 to do so. So I think I had it listed for 50. I do smart pricing on Mercari, which means that Mercari will drop the price of an item for me every day until it hits my bottom price that I've indicated for it. And I think that for this dress, I probably said that my bottom floor price would be $40, but when it hit $47 as the price, someone just went ahead and bought it outright. So I was very happy with that sale. I made a profit of $33.65 and this dress I think was listed for less than a week. So those are the kinds of Talbot sales that I love. I did have a payout on the 15th of September, which I didn't talk about in last week's video, which is why I'm including it in this video from the real real. It was nothing. It was enough for me to get large fries on a Friday using my McDonald's app, using my deal of the week. So it was a horrible payout, but I'll talk about it really quickly because, you know, we're trying to share all the information so that you know what reselling platforms are worth your time and which ones are not. But I sold two things in the month of August, I guess, and I got a payout of $13.00. But I had some cost of goods into those items. So both of these items came from a wholesale palette that I purchased from a reseller. One item was this Joie mini dress and the other one was a Neiman Marcus pattern silk tie. So both of these items sold, um, the dress sold for 13, the tie sold for $17.50. So the tie sold for more than the dress. I don't know. I feel like Joie is such a beautiful brand. People just don't care about it though. It doesn't resell for a ton. I had $3.92 into each item. So when all was said and done, once you factor in, you know, how much the real real takes from each sale and my cost of goods, I made a profit of a dollar and 31 cents on those two items. Could I have made more had I listed them myself? abso friggin -lutely. Now I do think both items would have sat in my closet or in my eBay store for a very long time because neither of those pieces, in my opinion, were super desirable. Um, but still, like if I had just gone through the effort of taking the pictures, listing them, I would have made more. However, I, I don't feel awful about, you know, how little it came out to. I don't feel awful about the fact that I let the real real sell those for me. If it was like, a Burberry bag or something and I made that little, I would have been really upset because I know that I could have made so much profit had I sold something like that by myself. But these two items, it's not like I would have made a ton more. Yes, I would have made more, but 
Eh, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. Let's move on to Tuesday, which is September 20th. I had two Mercari sales. The first one was this pair of the North Face black quilted 700 goose down fur lined snow boots in a women's size seven. Those my sister-in-law gave to me for free and they sold for $48. And this was back in September. So even in September, people were already looking for winter supplies like winter boots, winter coats. If you have any winter stuff like that, Oh my goodness, like you need to get that stuff listed right now. But I made a profit of $41.51. And while I was looking up comps for these boots, I found another pair that were identical in style and um, I think even in size, but that person had them listed for so little. And so I just went ahead and bought those two so that I could have them show up at my house. I could list them and hopefully make close to $50 on those as well. The next thing to sell was this Polo by Ralph Lauren striped rugby hooded pullover sweatshirt in a size large. This sold on Mercari for $29. To be honest, I could have probably waited and gotten a lot more for it, but because I only had $2, into this item since it came to me from a friend of mine who recently moved to a different part of Illinois I was like I can take $29 and still make money so I made a profit of $22 and 96 cents on that and that wasn't something that I had to go out and source myself it was something like I said that showed up to my door very excited about it and I have a lot more of this particular friend's stuff to list and sell and I'm very excited because his stuff has been selling so well on Facebook marketplace I sold this pair of Gap Factory gray cropped low rise leggings. It was part of their Gap body line um, in a size extra small. These sold for $12 and I made a profit of $11.15 because those were my leggings. I had them in my pile of leggings that I rarely ever wear and I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and list these. I'm never going to wear them. Um, and I made some money off of them. That is something that I like to do even though I know there's not a lot of profit in a lot of my personal items. It's like, why not make a little extra money getting rid of my stuff, you know, and it's stuff that I can list and I can go through the motion of listing and getting new things up on different platforms. I'm happy to do it and make $10 here, $15 there. It's money. On Wednesday, which was September 21st, I had two eBay sales. The first one was this pair of Cole Haan brown leather lace-up chukka boots, chukka boots, I don't know how to say that word, in a men's size nine. These sold for $44.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. It was promoted at 3% and it came from my same friend that moved and just gave me a ton of stuff. I gave him a ton of money for those items, which is why I'm saying that everything came out to like $2 a piece. He really was going to give me everything for free. And he even gave me like a clothing rack and he gave, I don't know, he just gave me a ton of random stuff. Um, and I was like, no, let me give you some money. And so he took it obviously. And I'm saying I had about $2 into each item. So I made a profit of $30 and 66 cents on those boots. Cole Haan shoes and these kind of boots for men, they are great sellers. They're great bread and butter pieces to have in your closet and they will sell consistently. But again, similar to Skechers, I do find that I tend to sit on them for quite a bit, at least a couple months before they sell. Part of that I think is just the fact that there are a lot listed online. Um, there are other brands that people are looking for, but Kohan is a very like tried and tested brand that people know, they love it, and they'll keep coming back to it. And if you're patient, if you are listing those kinds of shoes and boots from Cole Haan, they will eventually sell, and they'll sell for decent money. The next thing to sell was this Free People Baby Blues denim tunic dress in a size extra small. It had some smocking on it, it was pleated, and it sold for $27 on eBay. I had $3.92 into that because it was part of that wholesale palette, so I made a profit of $17 and 21 cents. Free People is another brand that, man, I just sit on it for longer and longer and longer. It does not sell quickly. Um, oftentimes I'm accepting a lot less on Free People items than I thought I would just because I need to move them. They're just not moving very quickly. So it's kind of sad, but it is what it is. On Mercari, I sold this Columbia black full zip fleece vest in a size medium. This sold for $12. It was part of that wholesale palette, so I had $3.92 into it, and my profit on that was $6.23. These kinds of like fleece pieces from Columbia, whether it's vests or um, just like the fleece 
full zips, like the long sleeve ones, they'll always sell. They're never going to sell for very much. So I never source them myself when I see them, you know, out and about at thrift stores, but I will list them if they show up at my house inside of a wholesale palette. On Thursday, which was September 22nd, I had a really great and surprising sale. It was this express white strapless jumpsuit in a size four. This was from my friend who moved out of state. He gave me probably 90% of the stuff that he gave me was his stuff, but about 10% of it was stuff from his wife. Again, some really great stuff from his wife as well, this being one of them. So I'm saying I had $2 into this, but this sold for $35, which was my full asking price, and it was a local sale. So I really don't sell a lot locally on Facebook Marketplace, especially because the majority of what I have listed is clothes. I feel like if you do a lot of bigger things like furniture or even video games or video game consoles, like that sort of stuff, I feel like that stuff tends to sell well. Um, via Facebook Marketplace. A lot of my friends, like right before they move, they will sell a lot of stuff from around their house on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap, just so they can get it out of their house, make a little bit of money. Um, and so clothes usually doesn't sell very much when it comes to local Facebook Marketplace buying, but someone needed a white outfit for like a bridal shower or something like that. And she happened to come across my listing. And so we set up an arrangement for her to come to my house later that day, pick it up. She gave me $35 cash, easy peasy. And I made $33 on that jumpsuit. Now, one caution when it comes to Facebook Marketplace is that there are a lot of scammers out there a lot. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Facebook Marketplace is tied with Instagram. So people can use their Instagram profiles to message you on Facebook Messenger regarding Facebook Marketplace listings. And what I always find is that if I list something that is $100 or more or $50 or more, I will always get a message on that listing from someone through Instagram and it'll always be, Hey, is this still available? And if you start a conversation with them, it'll sound very realistic. Like they've got the script down pat, you know, they'll say things like, where do you live? When can I pick this up? Blah, blah, blah. And then usually there's like another character that will join the scenario. So for example, the last scam attempt that I had was, um, someone messaged me, I want to say like about a dress or something. And they were like, okay, but can my brother pick it up? Because I'm not in town right now. And then they always want to pay with Zelle. That's usually the scammers, uh, payment platform of choice. And they always do this weird thing where they're like, okay, if you send $200, I'll send you $250 back. I don't know. It's so weird. Like the way that they try to do it is so weird. And one time I just wanted to see like what happens if I keep playing this game with them. And so someone, so I, so one time with someone, I said, okay, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this with Zell. Like send me the payment request or whatever. And the person sent me this weird email. It came from a weird email. They were like, you should get it in an email. And I was like, no, I shouldn't have to get it in an email. Like, I should just get it through Zell. But they were like, no, 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 you're going to get an email. And in the email, first of all, like, the email address was so wonky. And the formatting of the email was super off. Things were spelled wrong in the email. So I think that they just don't get a lot of people even to that point where they can send you this fake email. But Oh man, I don't know. It's very frustrating. And what I do is every time I get one of these scam attempts, I will report them to Facebook. I'll report them to Instagram because I want to make it harder for them to keep doing this kind of stuff. If I report that profile, I'm sure they have like 18 other profiles, but at least they can't use that one. And these people put a lot of effort into their attempts at scamming, you know, like these profiles on Instagram are fully fleshed out. They have like pictures, they have people who have liked their pictures. It's like, it's crazy. Just be careful out there. It's, it's wild. So just a little PSA about Facebook marketplace, but I do still like to list stuff on there because I've made some great sales on Friday, which was September 23rd on Poshmark. I sold this polo Ralph Lauren gray long sleeve polo shirt in a size small. This came from my friend who gave me all of his stuff before he moved. It sold for $22 with discounted shipping because of Posh VA and I had $2 into it. So I made a profit of $13 and 88 cents. You're going to hear a lot about sales from this person because I've been listing a lot of his stuff, selling a lot of his stuff, and I'm just very thankful to him for giving me all of that stuff. 
On eBay, I sold this Eileen Fisher blue silk cotton blend open sweater cardigan in a size medium. That one sold for my full asking price of $49.99. I had $3.92 into it from that wholesale palette, so I made a profit of $38.21. Eileen Fisher is another brand, I think it's definitely better than most of the brands that I've mentioned in this video, but it's another brand that while it sells really consistently and sells for good money, it does tend to sit for me. I don't know if you have that experience with Eileen Fisher as well, but it does it, so just beware. On Depop, I sold this Banana Republic gray tweed wool blend grandpa cardigan in a size medium. Guess who that came from? It sold for $38, and that was with free shipping because I offer free shipping on Depop and Kittizen. It's kind of the culture there. So I made a profit still on that cardigan of $21.93. I have actually been selling more on Depop, which is kind of crazy because I feel like I listed there consistently for over a few months before I even got my first sale. And I feel like now things are starting to get a little bit more consistent. I average like a sale a week maybe, although the next week of sales that we're going to talk about, no Depop sales. But I do get like at least one sale a week and that's pretty cool. And it's stuff that I don't feel like would sell anywhere else. And that's even cooler. And that's why, you know, the second tool that we'll talk about in this video as far as tools that help me keep my sanity when it comes to reselling as a part-time reseller is is List Perfectly. You guys have heard me talk about List Perfectly so much on my channel, but it's because I really do use List Perfectly every single day. I use it not only to cross list so that I can get cool pieces like this over to really random platforms like Depop, but also as my inventory management system. It's where I keep track of, you know, all of my inventory. I put in there how much I paid for the item, where I picked up the item, when I picked it up, where everything is listed. It's really a great tool and one that I wouldn't be able to live without. So if you want to try it yourself, I do have a coupon code Becky Park that you can use to save 30% off of your first month of List Perfectly. So definitely check it out. And you can check out this playlist right here where I've made a ton of instructional videos on how I personally use this perfectly. Plus they have a Facebook group that you know, has a lot of invaluable information if you're interested in this perfectly as well. On Saturday, which was September 24th, on Poshmark, I sold this new with tags, Eloquy red pleated A-line skirt in a size 28. That's all for $28. And that was something that I picked up at a local consignment store. They were having this birthday sale where you could stuff as much stuff as you could into a plastic shopping bag. And each bag was like $25. So I made a profit of $19.88 on that skirt. Super excited about that. On eBay, I sold this Vince Camuto red open back high neck dress. It had like a big bow on the back. It was really darling actually. And it was in a size two. That sold for $24 on eBay. I had a dollar and two cents into it because it was something that I acquired as part of a reseller buyout that I did from a local reseller. And so I made a profit of $20.41 on that. I had actually sold that before on eBay and the buyer never paid. So I just went ahead and relisted and I was able to make the sale again. So super happy about that. And then the last day of sales for this week was Sunday, which was September 25th. On eBay, I sold this Velvet by Graham and Spencer purple v-neck ruched dress in a size medium. This sold for $21.90 and it did sell through the global shipping program, which means it sold overseas. And I actually think it sold to someone in England, which is funny because that's where this brand is from. And it came to me in a thread up mixed bulk rescue box, however you say it. I don't know. There's a long uh, name for that particular box, but I don't care what it is. So they gave me a profit of $16.54, but it was listed for quite some time. This brand, I don't have good luck with. Like I sit on it usually for over a year. It usually doesn't sell for that much. I don't really pick it up anymore. The next thing to sell was this Patagonia brown shelf bra dress. It was made of organic cotton and it was in a women's size medium. This sold for $29.99, which was my full asking price. It was part of that wholesale palette. So I had $3.92 into it. So I made a profit of $21.39. So I will not bore you with all of the different platforms and how much I made on each platform because I have another week of sales to talk about. But what I will tell you is I sold on one, two, three, four, five different reselling platforms 
and the real real, which let's be honest, does that even count given that I made under $2 on that platform? But in total, I sold 22 items for a gross sales amount of $662.28. Once you factor in all of those platforms, fees and shipping discounts, that total drops to $518.67. My cost of goods for those items, and let's be honest, most of these items came from a wholesale palette or from my friend. Um, the cost of goods was $67.03. And so my net profit for this particular week was $451.64. So now let's talk about this next week of sales and we'll try to go through these really quickly. It'll be easy to do because I didn't really sell that much. And I'll also give you my September totals as well because in talking about this week we'll talk about you know the rest of September. So on Monday, which was September 26th, I sold this RJ Colt Max Gray leather lace-up pair of ankle boots in a men's size 10. I had never heard of this brand, RJ Colt, but when I saw them at a local Goodwill, I just thought they looked really well constructed. I thought they were really cool, so I took a chance and you know picked them up for $10.89. There was some sort of sale for the color of the week or something like that. They sold for $40 and I made a profit of $21.11. I think they were probably listed for I don't know I want to say like four to five months which isn't horrible so not too shabby I definitely will consider picking up that brand in the future if I see it again the next thing to sell was this free people sailor song crop nautical knit anchor sweater in a size large now in the week prior I sold a free people piece and I talked about how you know I had to sit on it for a while free people just doesn't move very quickly anymore this was not the same situation. This piece sold incredibly fast. I want to say I had it listed for less than a week. I had it listed for $50 and it sold for $45. I only had $5.10 into it because it was part of a sidewalk sale at a local consignment store. Um, there was like a little flaw. It was knit and some of the I don't know, like you could just tell like some of the knitting wasn't in pristine condition. So I just took pictures of those little flaws and indicated it, you know, in the description of the listing as well. Still sold for 45. I made a profit of $29.18 on that. I thought this was darling. So I was not surprised when it sold as quickly as it did. On eBay, I sold this vintage pair of Tommy Hilfiger beige pleated khaki pants in a size 32 by 30. These sold for $10 and I was like, hallelujah, thank you Jesus that these moved. It's not even like I've had these listed for very long, but um, probably like two or three times ago that we went to the Chicago suburbs to visit my in-laws, my mother-in-law had a garbage bag full of just vintage men's pants, but it's like not cool vintage, not like Stussy or Jenko or, you know, it's not like 90s cool young people vintage. It's like 90s old men going to work vintage. So it's like, yeah, vintage Tommy Hilfiger, lots of Dockers. There was some like Izod, Polo Ralph Lauren, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm making myself list them because there's money to be made. It's just not fun listing these pieces. But these sold for $10. They were promoted at 3%. I made a profit of $7.89. On Mercari, I sold this pair of Play Tie, I think that's the style name, blue camo hook and loop slip on shoes in a youth size 13. I use the term hook and loop because in reality it's a Velcro strap across the top, but Velcro is one of those Vero terms on eBay. If you use the word Velcro, your listing will get pulled, you will get a strike on your account. It's just one of those unwritten rules that eBay will totally penalize you for not knowing. So if you're curious as to what are the Vero terms on eBay, you can Google it. There are a lot of words that you cannot say, Velcro being one of them. So I've gotten in the habit of just saying hook and loop instead of Velcro, but these sold for $21. I got them at the Goodwill outlet in Seattle. And so I only had $2 into them and I made a profit of $15.99. Play is a great brand to be on the lookout for when it comes to kids shoes. They're just very well made. I think they even make stuff actually for adults. I know I've seen like men's boots and stuff like that, but they're really well known for their kids stuff. On Tuesday, which was September 27th, I had one Depop sale. Oh, I do have a Depop. I said I didn't have a Depop sale this week, but I did. Um, it was this vintage pair of requirements, gray 100% wool pinstripe trousers in a size 6 petite. This is another example of like 90s, very old school, like 
workwear, but I think for women's, this style actually kind of works pretty well. They sold on Depop for $27 with discounted shipping, and I made a profit of $14.66. So this is a prime example of why, even though Depop you know, doesn't make me a ton of sales. I still see value in it because this same pair of pants, I don't think got any sort of attention on any other platform. And I have them listed to like four or five other platforms. No one cares about them on any of those other platforms. But this is precisely the kind of thing that people are looking for when it comes to Depop. Depop buyers are looking for vintage. They're looking for just kind of throwback pieces. This was a perfect thing to list on Depop. And I wasn't surprised when it did finally ultimately sell on Depop. And that's one of the reasons why I still mess with Depop, even though it doesn't make me a ton of money. Um, I'll be able to move things that I probably won't be able to move on other platforms, or I have to wait like three years and I don't really want to do that. On Wednesday, which was September 28th, I sold this pair of Coach Sophie Navy Leather Suede Pointed Toe Pumps in a size 9. These sold on Poshmark for $25. I had them listed for a lot more, but they were pretty worn, especially on the toe of these shoes. I believe there's a lot of wear to the suede. And I got these in a thread of rescue box for $5, so I made a profit of $15, and I was okay with that, you know, given their condition. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari. It was this Greg Norman golf gray moisture wicking short sleeve polo shirt in a size 2XL. I don't know why that was so hard for me to read. This sold for $12. I had a dollar and two cents into it because it was part of a um, reseller inventory buyout that I did many, many months ago. I think over a year ago at this point, but I just got around to listing it not too long ago. So I made a profit on that of $9.13. And the biggest lesson that I learned from this particular inventory buyout is that golf pieces, regardless of the brand, will sell. Greg Norman, I've passed on Greg Norman a bajillion times in the past, and I continue to pass on it to this day, even with my experience. But what I've learned is it will sell, and it'll sell pretty quickly. And so it is the kind of thing that from now on, if I find it at the bins or something, I will for sure pick up any Greg Norman or Jack Nicholas, I think that's how you say it. I think when I said his name in a video before I said Nicklaus and my friend made fun of me because he was like, he's not related to Santa Claus. And I was like, okay. But um, Jack Nicholas, who are the other ones? Even like Nike Golf, Adidas Golf, like anything golf, it'll sell and it'll sell pretty quickly. Um, you're just not going to make a ton of money. But if you find it at the bins, I think it's worth it. On Thursday, which was September 29th, on Poshmark, I sold this panhandle slim pearl snap stripe button-up shirt in a men's size 15 and a half neck. Um, it was definitely like a Western cowboy style. It sold for $15. I had a dollar and two cents into it because it was part of that uh, inventory buyout that I just talked about. And so I made a profit of $10.98. Um, I have also learned that these kind of like Western shirts with like the pearl snap, like those will sell as well. I don't, I don't really like selling this stuff though. I think because it is also a button up shirt in nature and these things tend to wrinkle really easily. I tend to have to, you know, steam them to get the wrinkles out and it's not really worth my time. Whereas a lot of this moisture wicking golf type stuff, um, it doesn't wrinkle as easily. It's a lot more forgiving. It's a lot easier to get the wrinkles out of. So those kinds of things I'm willing to pick up at the bins, but these pearl snap things, I also feel like I have to sit on for longer. So not really about that life. On eBay, I sold this Harper Canyon blue striped 100% cotton sweater in a youth size 5. This I picked up for 80 cents from a local consignment store over two years ago when they, let me sh when they let me shop in bulk at their storage unit in the height of COVID. So I only had 80 cents into it. It sold for $10 and it was promoted at 3%. So I made a profit of $7.10 on that sweater. On Friday, which was September 30th, I had three Poshmark sales and they were all jeans. So the first thing to sell was this pair of Levi's wedgie straight leg distressed cutoff jeans in a size 34 for women. They were cropped and I got them for $9.00 at, I think I got these at Plato's Closet. They sold for $45, which to be honest, if I had waited a little bit, I probably could have gotten more, but I was happy with the quick flip and I made a profit of $28 on those. The next thing to sell was this pair of American Eagle high rise jegging camo skinny jeans in a women's size 16. I had $3.75 into these from a local consignment store and they sold for $23, so I made a profit of $14.65. American Eagle is another one of those 
brands that it used to do so well and you could consistently count on, you know, selling jeans for like $25 to $30. I do think that the price you can get for American Eagle denim has definitely gone down, probably closer to like $80 to $20 at this point. So the fact that I was able to sell these for $23, that's not bad. But I am going to slow down on picking up American Eagle denim for sure, especially for women. They still do pretty decently for men, but again, they sell more consistently around that like $20 to $22 price range. It's a, it's a lot harder to get $25 for them at this point. Um, the last pair of jeans that we'll talk about for this day was this pair of Madewell black Cali Demi boot cut button fly crop jeans in a women's size 29. This Cali Demi boot cut style from Madewell is one of my favorites to sell. It always sells really fast and for close to $50. And these were no exception. These sold for $45. That was with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA. I had $12.50 into them from a local consignment store. So I still made a profit of $21.78. And I'll still definitely pick up this style of jean from Madewell. It's still proving to sell pretty well. Um, and until the data proves otherwise, I'm going to keep picking it up. On Saturday, which was September 1st, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Fry Brown Varic Leather High Top Lace-Up Sneakers in a men's size 13. These sold for $45, and they were something that I picked up at the Goodwill Bins in Seattle. They were pretty beat up, and the like rubber lining on the sides definitely was kind of detached in some parts of the shoe. Um, I had about $2.50 into those, and so I still made a profit on those of $33.50. I do remember kind of like going back and forth at the bins with my husband if I should pick these up or not, because like I said, they were in kind of rough condition, but ultimately we decided to pick them up, even though they would take up a lot of space in the, uh, in the suitcase that we were gonna be checking them in, but I, I thought they'd be worth it. And I I think that they definitely were. The next sale that we'll talk about is this pair of Tory Burch brown leather Riva ballet flats in a women's size six. I actually got these on Whatnot and I got them for myself because I've always wanted a pair of these Tory Burch type flats. They were too big for me. Like I said, you know, when I talked about last week's sales, I wear a women's size four and a half or a five. And sometimes, especially in boots, a six will work, but these just definitely didn't. So I had a lot into them because of the fact that I got them on Whatnot. Um, um, because, you know, you have to pay for shipping as well. So I had $29.22 into these, but they sold for $63, which was such a reasonable offer. I want to say I had them listed for $65, and the fact that someone offered me $63, I was very happy. I wish that person could give a lesson on, you know, how to send reasonable offers. But I ended up making a profit of $21.18, even though I paid close to $30 for them. I do not recommend paying $30 for this style of Tory Burch flat. And for me to get $63 really is kind of a lot. It's a lot higher than a lot of comps would show. But I just got lucky. And I'm very thankful that even though they didn't work out for me, I was able to rehome them with someone else. The last day of sales that we'll talk about is Sunday, October 2nd, um, on eBay, I sold this Banana Republic Blue Argyle Silk Cotton and Cashmere Blend Sweater in a size small for men. This is like a very specific almost proprietary blend of fabrics that Banana Republic used to use. I don't know if they still do this, but um, they used to do this thing with like the silk cotton cashmere blend. And I think there's like 5% cashmere, but um, it was very popular for a while. This was again from my friend who moved and, you know, gave me all of his clothes. This sold for $15, which I was fine with because I had $2 into it. And so I made a profit of $10 and 20 cents on that and it sold really fast. So even more reason to be very happy about that sale. So for this particular week, I sold on four different platforms. I sold nine items on Poshmark, which was the most, and then just three on eBay, two on Mercari, one on Depop, which compared to the week before, I had only sold five items on Poshmark the week before. So, you know, this particular week, Poshmark stepped it up. Um, in the week prior, Poshmark really kind of stunk, but everything else, you know, filled in the gap. So that was really nice. But this week of sales, I only sold 15 items for a gross sales amount of $441. Once you factor in fees and shipping, that total drops to $349.07. I had $87.72 as my cost of goods, and so my net profit for the week was only $261.35, which is... Hmm, it's not good. It's not what we're going for. But that's part of the territory that comes with, you know, having 
a life outside of reselling. It's when life beckons and when you have things to deal with and you have to just kind of let go of your reselling responsibilities, that's what's gonna happen and I'm okay with that. So in the month of September, I had a net profit of $2,023.38, which is nowhere near my goal of $3,333, but it's money earned that I didn't have before and I will happily and humbly take it. So year to date so far, I have made $20,744.33. I have not looked at my data you know, comparing where I am now to where I was last year, if I had to guess, I would guess that I'm doing less than I was doing last year. I would guess that I'm making less net profit. Again, I'm okay with it. This year is different from last year for a lot of different reasons. You know, a lot of things that are outside of my control, such as just the economy, just the state that our world is in right now. I don't have control over those things. All I can do is what I can do, which is list and, um, you know, just keep doing my thing. And so, I'm not going to beat myself up over the fact that my numbers aren't where I want them to be. They're not at the goals that I had set for myself. But I think by having goals in the first place, it definitely caused me to push myself harder than I would have without having any goals in place. So, you know, it is what it is. It kind of stinks. I feel like that's like the mantra of my life. It is what it is. But it is like that. That's you only have control over so much. And um, I feel like I'm doing the best with what I have control over. Everything outside of that is out of my hands. So that that is how those two weeks of sales went down. Let me know how sales have been for you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and definitely make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet either. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.